Hello and welcome to ATP Report. I'm Barry Newsbaum. It's the Katie and Barry Show. And joining me halfway to America <laughs> is Katie Hopkins in sunny southern Mexico. Yes. Hi, Katie. Hi, Barry. And I am, as you rightly say, here in Mexico. But still, I will remind our lovely audience and viewers to get in touch with their friends, help bring them into our family. Uh, if they just text the word TRUTH, T-R-U-T-H, to 88202, uh, they can get our content straight to their phone absolutely free. And I, and I say that even from Mexico, Barry. That's my level of commitment. Brilliantly said. Thank you very much for that. Uh, in the United States, where you'll be soon, um, our former president, President Trump, uh, went real aggressive against the RNC and told them, you can't use my face and you can't use my name for fundraising. Mm. Um, very bizarre. It's never happened before for the head of the party to tell the party, uh, I guess my likeness and my name is bigger than you are and only I can use it for fundraising and mm. so on. What do you make of it? Do you think it's because he doesn't want certain people being campaigned for by the RNC? He wants to pick and choose or does he want the fundraising all to go to him or do you have another idea? <laughs> now, as an outsider, I suppose it feels like he's looking in from the outside now, thinking, well, the RNC, what they ever done for me? And, uh, and that, that's a conversation in itself. And I'm thinking he just doesn't want to see money being raised using his face, his name, going to people who tried to impeach him. And in some way, that feels kind of logical. But then in another way, I wonder, Barry, what it's going to mean in terms of what are people going to support? What is going to be the, I mean, how would you describe yourself now? Are you a Trump supporter? Are you a Republican? Are you an RNC member? You know, how do people who are part of that church, who do they say that they believe in anymore? And, and it, it raises another interesting question on top of your excellent question, which is there are now a, fairly significant number of Republican incumbents in the Senate saying they won't stand for re-election. And as you look at the statistics in American history, sadly, you have to be a buffoon or a criminal not to win re-election because you have access to incredible power, which is why incumbents almost always win, especially in the Senate. And there's an unprecedented number of the non-Trump Republicans saying, I give up, I'm not coming back. And in every case, conservatives who are pro-Trump are lining up for the primary. So, Do you think it's because of Trump that they're not running? Yeah, so that was gonna be my question to you, Barry, I guess is, is or my question to you is which way around does this work? It's a bit chicken and egg, isn't it? Do, do you think that they didn't want to run again? They didn't really fancy it, whatever. And so they voted against Trump or they voted to impeach Trump because they knew they weren't running again. Or do you think they voted to impeach Trump and then they were scared of running again? So they say they're going to resign. Which way around does that go? I, I think if there's a third alternative, I, I sort of lean towards that. And you know, until you talk to the person and get them to honestly answer you, maybe after three cocktails, you <laughs> probably don't even no. know what the truth is. No. I think the truth is a, a somewhat different, which is there was such an outpouring of rage uh, in regards to what happened on January 6th that certain Republicans piled on either by voting that way for impeachment or making their voices heard that he did a terrible thing and ought to be criminally prosecuted. And then, and then their base came after them with pitchforks. I mean, <laughs> the outrage over January 6th against the Republicans who crossed the line uh, to join with the uh, Democrats who were voting to impeach was <laughs> an avalanche. And I think it shocked a great number of those Republicans thinking oh boy, I just lost half my base. And if I stand for re-election, male or female, whether it's in Alaska or in Maine or North Carolina, uh, Ohio, 
I won't be reelected. So maybe it's time for me to go. I think there's some truth to that. Yeah. Yeah. And how do you think uh, in those primaries, um, if they happen or when they happen, do you feel confident that there will be strong America first candidates being put forward? The people that are saying that they're going to run, saying that they are going to put themselves forward. Is, is your gut that these are a, I don't want to say better type of representative of America first agenda, but is there a sense that we're building strength? I think a hundred percent yes in capital letters oh. especially especially with what's happened with this covid 1.9 trillion dollar bailout of everything but covid yeah yeah um, i did a segment this week only eight and a half percent of the oh. covid relief trillions is going to covid relief the other 91 and a half percent is going to pork and people are outraged i mean all kinds of BS projects here and around the world, and people have just had it. And all of a sudden they're remembering that America First slogan and MAGA slogan that seems to be ancient history. And that's resonating with a lot of people. Why? Because the country's already broke, Katie Hopkins, and it's been made much, much, much worse after all of what's happened with COVID and the economy being shut down, the people are saying, hey, whatever money's left, let's spend it on us, not on others over there. So yes, see, um, America first will be the campaign slogan. Did you see Pelosi doing her little wiggle jiggle when, she, when it got past the 1.9? She did this little weird dance thing behind her podium or her rostrum you know because she was so pleased with herself that it had got through and I, to me that was the, that was a real signal of how they think they're just on a home run now and they are in a way for the next year or so they can just keep spending other people's money and they're loving it they, they are sort of in a they're sort of in a party mode almost just throwing out american taxpayers cash to wherever they like and it's interesting for coming from someone that you just mentioned who's worth over $100 million. <laughs> if America went completely bankrupt, it wouldn't change her lifestyle one tiny bit. She'd still have her $20,000 freezer filled with thousands of dollars of very expensive ice cream. It's not going to bother her life at all. No. Let's talk about something else. The border is blowing up. Uh, World records are being sent in, uh, in, in this country on the southern border for illegal immigration. And the governor of Texas has done something rather amazing, Katie. He sent the National Guard of Texas down to the border because it's a catastrophe of people pouring across. They think 90,000 has already come across the border. Um, in, in several months. And all of last year, it was about the same number, maybe slightly higher, but we're only two months into the year. This is crazy. Um, you're, gonna, you're gonna see a fight between the rights of Texas to protect itself and the rights of the United States to force an illegal immigration policy down on its citizenry in Texas. Who's right and who's wrong? And I think it's, um, you know, so with Governor Abbott, so happy the National Guard are being mobilised to get down there. And actually quite a relief, Barry, having seen the National Guard mobilised into D.C. in a completely unnecessary way. And I think 25,000 of them still being held there for no apparent reason. It is actually good to see the National Guard being used with some sort of conviction to defend a border. I think it's important. Uh, having witnessed this in the U.K. with a deluge of migrants you know one of the things is that very quickly those there's a few towns that take the brunt of this you know of people lying on the streets of of you know public bathrooms that are overrun of, of you know bad things happening in certain areas and the people of texas of course are going to feel that very acutely um, and having spent time down there on that border at the rio grande um, and uh, in mccallan and other places it's amazing very to see it that if I can sort of explain it, you look across the river 
and you can see the pathways. I mean, they're worn by the traffickers, by the people they bring, by the migrants, by the illegals. It's almost like a national park. You know, it's almost like the routes are sort of signposted. Like, oh, you walk this way, come on in. There's even the blue barrels that people will know that have seen these, the blue barrels that are put out by the do-gooder NGOs with water and supplies in so that when they get thirsty or hungry on their walk, they can have a little snack. I mean, it is next level crazy down there. Well, let's make it even crazier. And I've talked about this for about a week. When you have a thousand people at the border wearing Biden t-shirts and holding up Biden signs, and they're all holding hands and singing together, it looks like, well, a dance routine um, from a major theater company. Somebody's paying for that. Somebody's bringing those people there. Somebody's passing out t-shirts, supplies, and beautifully constructed signs from professional printers. This is not in capital letters, this is not some sort of, well, simultaneous conscious changing, let's run to America. This is fully, fully uh, being put together by people who want nothing more than illegal immigration. Don't you agree? Absolutely. And we've seen this playbook over and over. We've seen it in the UK as well. The last terrorist attack within, I don't know, moments, Barry, uh, there were Muslim ladies dressed with whatever on, holding signs, you know, saying we reject what's just happened, handing out roses to the passers-by, the media were there on demand uh, to capture the moment, to show that, oh, look, the Muslim faith rejects all of this. All very much, you know, a package, a, a sort of publicity package. You have the same at the border. And the big annoyance to me, Barry, and if I was there, I'd love to get there. I'd love to get hold of those camera crews, and I'd love to get hold of those presenters filming this because you know that they've been told to be there at 10 a.m. They've probably been given a coffee and a cake. They are complicit in this because if they turn their cameras off, they wouldn't be giving oxygen to these NGOs that are trying to take down America. This is why we need our old, this is why what you're doing matters and ATP matters. We need old, truthful media back. Whatever happened to the news, you know? Well, thanks for that, except for the old part. <laughs> <laughs> I don't mean that. I mean traditional. I know. Uh, <laughs> just being sensitive as I get older. Uh, thanks, Katie, for coming on today and um, for the shout out for people to sign up for ATP by yeah. texting TRUTH to 88202. Um, we appreciate you signing up for our free content because we never charge for it. For Katie, I'm Barry Newsbaum. Thanks for joining us today on ATP Report. Thank <laughs> you.